how do you um, how do you make these things not just seem retain their banality and um, uh, as, as they would be if they were Norman Rockwell, say, um, without it turning into surrealism or just something that looked distorted for the sake of distorted or something that actually seemed to have some emotional and psychological character, um, that became the, the challenge. That became the challenge, and uh, I first started doing things where I used um, well one one ploy that I've used over and over again is basically like a Rorschach, you know, like the inkblot test. It's finding a structure or a composition that I really liked that was abstract, totally abstract, like Lissitsky or Malevich. And then imagining that that is a real situation and trying to see what it became of its own accord, like you do in an inkblot test. And this would suggest a structure. And then I would try to push that structure without changing, changing as little as I could, the structure, the abstract structure, change it into readable, legible version of these of concrete, real situations. So uh, that was one, one way. Another way was to actually try to find ways to deal with perspective so that you, I wasn't, you weren't sitting like a viewer looking at either people on a stage, as in traditional Renaissance painting, or as people in a photograph office in most figurative work. Uh, I wanted something in which you as a viewer were more thrown inside the situation. I looked at Japanese painting a lot and using parallel perspective where nothing recedes, everything stays parallel. So as things go back in space, they stay the same size. Like architects do that too. Um, so I did a lot of paintings that way using parallel perspective. I did some paintings where I mixed perspectives. But then I had this thought about, um, I was doing faculty, I taught for 40 some, 40 some years, spent endless amounts of time in faculty meetings, and I thought somebody should do a painting of a faculty meeting because uh, nobody ever has to my knowledge, and it's everybody now in the art world has been in faculty meetings. So. Um, I took all these photographs of faculty and um, I just was stymied. I didn't know what to do because usually I just had a few figures and there were 10, 15 people. So one day I had this idea, well, what would happen if I made myself the vanishing point? As, you know, usually the thing furthest away from you is the vanishing point and very small. I said, what if I make myself the vanishing point and make everything get bigger as it goes away? So I took my photographs of the faculty meeting and I turned them upside down so that the tables were now in reverse perspective and found the vanishing point. If you know anything about perspective, then the vanishing point becomes down here instead of up there. And then I redrew these figures um, so that they would seem to work around these new tables in reverse perspective. So that got me started doing reverse I really liked what happened with that. At first I thought it was really too gimmicky, but um, but really psychologically I really liked the things that started to happen of people that ordinarily were not noticed suddenly became very important and important people became very unimportant and the sort of Egyptian thing happened. And so um, so I kept exploring. I did a whole probably 10 big paintings of faculty meetings in reverse perspective. Um, and then I started doing my friends, eating dinner around restaurants, around tables and things in reverse perspective. And I even tried a few landscapes and things, but mainly it was people around tables in reverse perspective. And then recently I've been doing some things where the space is sometimes unfolded, where the foreground objects fall backward and are upside down. Uh, so I just play with, I think of them as sort of contraptions that I'm putting together um, out of components to make uh, a kind of equivalent of the sensation of these concrete situations. But always behind there is the idea that I'm, um, I'm finding a way to ex explore in an unboring way, boring. <laughs>
boring situations. I guess you might put it that way if you're going to sum it up.